On March 8, 2014, a Boeing 777 passenger jet operated by Malaysia Airlines takes off from Kuala Lumpur on routine flight to Beijing. Less than an hour after departure, the aircraft suddenly vanishes from radar over the Gulf of Thailand. With 239 souls on board, it becomes the greatest aviation mystery the world has ever seen. We're investigating the baffling disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 in 2014. Even now, years later, MH370 remains an enigma. The fate of the aircraft and those on board still unknown. In this video, we'll go through the key details of this haunting case, exploring everything from military radar data showing the plane radically changed course to cutting-edge deep-sea scanning operations searching miles of remote ocean floor. We'll analyze debris recovered thousands of miles away for clues, and we'll highlight what investigators believe they may find if the wreckage is discovered somewhere in the vast open waters of the Indian Ocean. To help tell this complex story, we'll use advanced 3D visualizations draining away the sea itself to reveal the hidden terrain below and simulate possible crash dynamics. Let's get started. On the day it vanished, Flight 370 departs as scheduled, a red-eye bound for Beijing carrying 227 passengers from 14 nations along with 12 Malaysian crew. The first hour of the flight is completely routine as the jet follows its planned northeast track. But as it passes the border between Malaysian and Vietnamese airspace, things suddenly go horribly wrong. ACRs and transponder lost. Ground control loses all contact with the aircraft over the Gulf of Thailand. The jet's ACR's automated communication system stops sending data, and its transponder shuts off, severing secondary radar contact. Oddly though, the jet's primary radar return, or raw radar reflection, briefly continues tracking on radar, and military radar installations even log the aircraft radically turning around and flying back across the Malaysian Peninsula. With the transponder off, the jet's altitude is unknown, but the aircraft remains fully pressurized, seeming to indicate it has not crashed. Malaysian 370, level 3, 5, 0, to Malaysian 370. Malaysian 370, Where is Flight 370 going? And is anyone still in control? Ghost plane. Bafflingly, even after flying hundreds more miles, Flight 370 simply vanishes a second time. This ghost plane, now a flying phantom, disappears out over the remote southern Indian Ocean. For authorities, it's a mass emergency rapidly spiraling into a frightful enigma. They initiate search plans for a possible downed aircraft while urgently communicating with other regional centers. Fighter jets are scrambled, but there is no sight of the missing Boeing. With no clues where the plane might be, Finding even intact wreckage in the vast open ocean could take weeks or months. Satellite handshakes. As the search intensifies, investigators do secure a tantalizing electronic clue. A series of hourly satellite handshakes recorded by an Inmarsat communications satellite. Although ACARS stop sending telemetry, the aircraft still pings this satellite. And while no actual data is transferred, the pings allow investigators to chart seven arcs possible locations where the jet could have been each hour. Using known speeds and fuel reserves for a 7 Swambus 7, officials calculate the aircraft could have flown over six more hours. The final arc stretches far out into the southern Indian Ocean. All signs now point to Flight 370 navigating on its own before finally running out of fuel and crashing remote and alone in some of the most desolate waters on Earth. Surface Search with this information, authorities scramble to deploy all available air and sea assets to search along this arc for floating wreckage. Aircraft crews flying exhaustive grid patterns find nothing but ocean. At the same time, an armada of ships sail into the search zone, hunting for debris on the turbulent seas. It is soon the largest surface search in aviation history. But floating wreckage that could confirm the shocking crash scenario does not turn up. In past disasters, 
crews typically recovered substantial floating debris relatively quickly. Discovering key evidence like cabin interiors, luggage, Flight 370 seeming to just disappear without a trace, remains deeply troubling for investigators. And still, search crews find themselves confronted by an enormously vast area to cover. Just where could this lost jetliner be? Another development, I can report Ocean Shield detected an oil slick yesterday evening in her current search area. A sample of about two litres has been collected and it will be a number of days before it can be landed ashore and conclusively tested. I stress the source of the oil is yet to be determined, but the oil slick is approximately 5,500 metres downwind and down sea from the vicinity of the detections picked up by the towed pinger locator on Ocean Shield. Second development today, the uh, acceptance by authorities that the batteries on what's thought to be the black box transponders from the missing airliner uh, have now all but certainly run out. They haven't received any acoustic signals since last Tuesday, so now it is signalling the end of the search for signals and uh, signalling the start of the search for uh, the underwater search. The Bluefin 21 submarine, an unmanned submarine, will de be deployed this afternoon to search the ocean floor to try to locate the wreckage site, but uh, authorities have warned this will be a painstakingly slow process. Let's take a listen to more on that. Understanding deep sea challenges. Next, we're going to take a closer look at recovery efforts for other crashed jets that faced similarly daunting searches. Let's investigate Air France Flight 447, which disappeared near the equator in 2009. Its story highlights exactly how difficult and time-consuming deep water air disaster searches can be. Air France Flight 447 case study. In 2009, Air France Flight 447 vanishes over the Atlantic Ocean while en route from Rio de Janeiro to Paris. Like MH370, its ACR's system stops working and its transponder suddenly shuts off. But debris is spotted floating at the crash site within one week of its loss. The discovery offers hope the main wreckage could be swiftly located on the seabed directly underneath. But our 3D visualization reveals a hidden world of crushing pressures and perpetual night far below the churning ocean surface that search crews must contend with. Here at over 12,000 feet, the broken remains of Flight 447 are strewn out over a distance of more than a third of a mile on the bottom, resting in inky darkness. Currents have carried floating debris miles from this deep water grave site and multiple search vessels pass right over without detecting the jet's black box locator beacons. It ultimately takes two years and over $40 million before searchers positively identify main wreckage debris fields on the seabed and retrieve critical flight recorders. The difficulty in finding AF-447 provides a sobering lesson for those now trying to locate Flight 370. Even with floating wreckage found, Underwater recovery could take extraordinary effort and luck across a huge undersea area. And any debris that doesn't actually float may never emerge to guide searchers. Yes, we know that families and uh, friends of passengers stayed here overnight in hotels nearby. Now it's still very early and uh, we haven't yet had a chance to see or speak to any of them. We have, though, spoken to staff members here who um, we asked them, obviously, uh, how they felt about what had happened yesterday and how they felt about coming to work today. Some said they felt nervous. Others said that it was business as usual and they know the risks involved in what they do. We spoke to one air hostess who said that when she got up this morning, her main concern was what she would tell passengers on board to reassure them because she said, I imagine they'll have many questions. And really what we're lacking is answers. We still don't yet know really what happened yesterday. So a few people that we spoke to said that, that really they are looking forward to knowing exactly what happened. Uh, now, we also spoke to passengers. Uh, one mother whose daughter was about to fly today told us that she imagines it was an isolated incident and so she's not particularly worried. Uh, we spoke to some other uh, passengers. Some were a little bit nervous, but most seemed uh, okay. Now, the air hostess I, w I mentioned earlier, she told us that it's uh, too soon really to know uh, if there have been cancellations today, but she imagines that there might be uh, quite a few. Underwater Locator Beacons 
Realizing debris may take far too long to pinpoint MH370's final location, search coordinators decide to focus on attempting to pick up locator pingers attached to the jet's black boxes. These underwater beacons activate after submersion in water. However, their batteries last just 30 days before signals begin to fade. Multiple ships with advanced listening equipment hurry to reach the vicinity of the seventh arc before the locator beacon batteries expire. It's a seemingly impossible race against time made vastly more complex by having no actual floating wreckage as a starting clue. Sea noise. In an astonishing development, independent sonar technicians at Australia's Curtin University analyze recordings from undersea hydrophones deployed off Australia's remote west coast used to monitor whale migrations 1,500 miles from the MH370 search zone. They identify a high-frequency sound potentially consistent with an aircraft slamming into the ocean. The pulse matches signals concurrently registered on different listening equipment owned by the United Nations Nuclear Test Ban Monitoring Agency. Triangulation analysis shows the sound originating along the 7th arc on March 8, 2014, the day Flight 370 vanished and at a time just after its final satellite handshake. For a moment, there is optimism. Could this actually be the long-missing Boeing striking the sea? Unfortunately, further assessment calculates the impact sound originating nearly 1,000 miles from estimated priority search areas. And with vessels already at maximum deployment across enormous real estate, this promising lead is reluctantly set aside as more likely related to a geologic event. The search for Flight 370 is again stymied without physical evidence to guide crews. In supporting the search for the missing Malaysian Airlines flight, the Navy is sending a towed pinger locator and a Bluefin 21 autonomous underwater vehicle to Perth, Australia. Yeah, we don't have anything to indicate where the aircraft is, uh, or even that it is, uh, down at the bottom of the ocean. But uh, Admiral Locklear, I think, made a very prudent and wise decision to move the equipment that could be useful should a debris field be found, or should we think we can uh, uh, get close to where the black box may be. Uh, he made a decision to get that gear there now, so that, uh, again, should we be in that position, um, uh, it'll be a lot easier to get it on, on station. These efforts are in addition to sending the P-3 and P-8 surveillance aircraft to assist in the search. From the Defense Media Activity, I'm Petty Officer Tony Rosa. MH370 was search zone geography. Next, coordinators have to carefully map the underwater realm itself across hundreds of thousands of square miles. Close study reveals a terrain marked by towering subsea mountain ridges, miles deep oceanic trenches, and scores of volcanoes studying the abyssal depths in every direction. It's a revelation underscoring the monumental obstacles facing search crews. Operating delicate sensor equipment millimeters above the seabed where light has never penetrated requires extremely precise navigation to avoid disaster. The task falls to survey ships trailing cutting-edge deep tow devices able to scan and map vast swaths of seafloor in detail. Their work fills enormous data gaps exposing a realm with understands so little of. With three years of supplies for 239 souls potentially scattered across an alien landscape none have ever laid eyes on, the pressure to finally locate MH370 drives exhaustive, round-the-clock search operations forward. Debris fields discovered. In several instances, sonar surveys reveal extensive debris fields consistent with modern aircraft wreckage. Each time, autonomous underwater drones specially designed for extreme deep water missions are quickly dispatched to photograph and document targets. Enormous excitement meets incredible disappointment, though when images finally return not of Flight 370, but old shipwrecks and even a Waputu bomber perfectly preserved miles down resting on the abyssal plain. While profoundly illuminating the hidden world kilometers below, after scanning for a combined distance equivalent to halfway to the moon, Authorities are no closer to finding Flight 370 or explanations for families of passengers. With extensive underwater searches fruitless, all hopes turn in 2016 to examination of aircraft fragments starting to wash up on African beaches more than 3,000 miles away. Debris recovered. The tattered remains recovered span over a dozen nations ringing the Indian Ocean. Laborious forensic analysis shows chemical exposure, 
degradation and biological fouling convincing investigators most originates from the missing Malaysian 7 Tabra 77. For victims' families suffering three long years with no answers, each shard elicits renewed waves of grief. But the debris provides critical clues confirming Flight 370 violently struck the water at high speed, given pieces ripped from deep inside the airframe itself. The extensive debris spread focuses attention on oceanographic computer models attempting to retrospectively track where floating wreckage originating along the seventh arc could drift over ensuing years, washed by seasonal currents and storms. Updated Priority Search Area By examining where confirmed MH370 debris is washing ashore versus areas where models show debris. Should wash ashore if the aircraft came down in certain zones, Researchers highlight a new underwater region over 1,000 miles from the initial underwater search site where models suggest currents would likely carry wreckage toward Africa, but away from Australia and Asia. It's a solid lead supported by additional analysis of the first recovered part traced to Flight 370, a wing segment called a flapperon discovered on Reunion Island off Madagascar in 2015. Detailed modeling suggests this flapperon specifically could only have reached Reunion if the aircraft went down along the newly highlighted priority zone. Seat cushions and plane windows have now been found on Reunion Island, according to the Malaysian government. This after it confirmed that a wing part washed up on the French overseas territory was from missing flight MH370. It's the first firm evidence the aircraft crashed into the ocean, but what went wrong remains unknown. While Malaysia's Prime Minister said the flapperon was from MH370, prosecutors in France, where the parts being analysed, stopped short of declaring they were certain. En route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing on March the 8th last year, the flight mysteriously vanished from radar. Search efforts have focused on a broad expanse of the southern Indian Ocean off Australia. We want to continue to use this piece of evidence to better inform our search efforts, but what it does tell us is that it's consistent with the search area that we are currently focused upon and so that's good news that we've at least narrowed it down to that part of the ocean where we hope the plane will be found. Simulations of the debris path suggest wreckage could continue washing up on reunion but until the black box recorders are found the mystery of what happened to Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 will remain intact. Closure for families. Even with this refined target area, subsequent underwater searches again find no definitive wreckage. After more than three years and over $150 million spent making it the most extensive search operation in aviation history, authorities reluctantly suspend the hunt for MH370 in early 2017. For families of those lost, though, there is still hope technology may someday provide answers and closure. Additional debris may yet turn up on distant shores, or new philanthropic groups may help reignite deep-sea surveys. The secrets the jetliner holds. The underwater search for missing Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 has been suspended, officials have announced. Malaysia, Australia and China, the countries coordinating the search efforts, said the decision had not been taken lightly. But they confirmed debris from the plane hadn't been located within the designated 120,000 square kilometre area in the southern Indian Ocean. The Boeing 777 disappeared with 239 people on board en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing in March 2014. Seven pieces of debris have so far been identified as either definitely or highly likely to be from the missing jet. Families of the victims have called the suspension irresponsible and are urging investigators to reconsider. We'll end today's examination into the challenging disappearance of Flight 370 by looking ahead at what the wreckage itself may reveal if located on the forbidding seabed miles below the waves. Using all of the insight gleaned from years of extensive analysis, we can construct a virtual rendering depicting how MH370 likely lies broken on the bottom today based on known data. The debris field stretches outward over thousands of feet with pulverized remnants from the wings, engines, and fuselage settled on slopes and buried in fine sediment. The flight recorders and locator beacons rest nearby. 
their crucial data locked away, waiting to finally explain what transpired during the jet's last moments. Answers to what exactly happened aboard Flight 370 remain elusive, but the exhaustive global search effort continues to advance underwater recovery knowledge while offering hope that, one day, even deepest lost secrets hidden by the sea may yet find light.